Father's Day is coming up and it's coming up fast. In fact, this vid might be a little bit late. And if you're like me, and you're always a little bit late for this kind of thing, you either think to yourself, oh, okay, I'll remember next year, for sure. Or more likely you end up making some sort of panic purchase of something that's just, that's just not all that great. But this, it stops now. It stops now for me, it stops now for you, and it stops now for our poor pops who are burdened with just decades of, of junk that they just feel obligated to keep. This list isn't a list of specific items, it's just more of a item categories that I think really hold value and that really can become something that a person will use and enjoy their entire lifetime long. And which one day could be handed down to the next generation because, I mean, there's a gift in that as well. First up, we have a watch. I think in reality, there are, there are not many items that people do tend to wear each and every day that become associated with that person and that really can last a lifetime if well taken care of. In fact, I can't think of anything quite as relevant as a watch. If I was giving my father a watch, here are some things I'd be looking for. First up, the movement. It would have to be automatic, it just makes sense. Then it'd have to be waterproof, bash proof, and just all around sturdy. My father is always up to something that he shouldn't be given his, his vintage, and he needs his thing solidly built. Then it would have to be easily legible, nothing fancy, with no complications, no, no dates, nothing like that. These things are just all superfluous for Papa Wilson. Although, Dad, um, a date function might be, might be useful, you know, for remembering things like your only son's birthday, maybe. I don't know. With all the, that list of, of criteria, all these sort of wants, I think we're heading into either the diaper watch category or the field watch category. Knowing my father, I think he'd much prefer a field watch. It just it goes more with his style and something on a on leather strap. But yeah, you'll have to think about your father's specific needs and lifestyle. It could be the, that an Apple watch is the best pick for him or a G-Shock or something like that. It's entirely individual to the dad. Next up, we have the denim jacket. This is here because quite regularly, I get messages asking me to date or authenticate a denim jacket that's been handed down from, from either father to, to kiddo or more frequently from, from grandfather to kiddo, actually. And I, I just love seeing the pictures that are sent over. There are some, some incredible examples of well-worn, well-faded and well-loved denim jackets that really, they just belong to a different time. There are even, even times when folk have shared some pictures with their, with their father or grandfather wearing the jacket in their childhood. And I just think this is, it's wonderful to have a garment like that, where it's versatile enough to, to walk with somebody throughout their lives. If I was choosing one for my father, it would have to be selvage, of course, but uh, a one wash, so it's a little bit softer, a little bit easier to wear right away. My dad likes pockets, lots of them, so you can lose things in them constantly. So probably a chore coat style, perhaps, or maybe perhaps a type two, but with, with hand warmer pockets. Okay, this next one is based on a piece of advice that I gave myself very early on. It is very easy to find something to write on, but it's very difficult to find something to write with. So I always carry a pen. For years, I was satisfied with whatever chewed biro I could lay my hands on as I left the house, until a friend gave me my first good pen, a Mont Blanc. That changed everything. There was suddenly a joy to writing. It wasn't just a necessity. And also people started to take notice of the writing implement, actually more so than, than when I got my first and only nice watch. I think that making a conscious, conscious choice with something as everyday as a pen, it shows a certain level of, of thoughtfulness, of style. I will say though that the Mont Blanc did not last long. I didn't lose it, it broke. Then I went through my Lamy period, then went back to Mont Blanc for a bit before settling on Caveco, specifically the brass sports pen. I love the way it writes, I love the way it looks, I love the way it feels in the hand and in the pocket, and it patinas up beautifully. And much more importantly, it's completely indestructible. And this is the one I would choose for my father. As always guys, there's links down in the description to a few of the places to find the specific pieces that I think are relevant. But yeah, as I said before, for your own pops and for his wants and needs there, they might be quite different. That There's also a link to the CRD sales page that could be a good place to start your search. Right, next up, we have something that, uh, that no one or at least very few folk needs on a daily basis, but then when you do need it, you need a good one, and that's a fixed blade knife. Right, before I go on, public service announcement, Please, 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 please check the local knife laws where you are. In some places, a fixed blade knife is an essential everyday carry. In others, like my homeland, for example, it's a jail sentence. Quite rightly so, British people, you are 
far too responsible with pointy stabby things. In fact, actually this reminds me of a story from back in the days when I was living in Leipzig. There was this guy, uh, he lived in our building. He was from somewhere in England. I can't remember, I don't even remember his name. Let's call him, let's call him Jonathan. So, Jonathan didn't do much. He played guitar very well, he smoked a lot of dope and drank a lot of beer. He'd somehow made his way over to Leipzig and managed to get on the German dole and was just chilling. To make a little bit of money on the side, he renovated uh, old knives and swords and this kind of thing. And I will say he made a very, very good job of it. He could take something that was rusted and completely destroyed and bring it back to life. After a certain amount of time, they called bullshit on him taking the German dole and he had to head back to England quite quickly because he owed a bunch of rent. When he was back in England, he started living with his parents and decided to continue, yeah, doing his, his little hobby on the side of, of renovating old knives, old antique knives. In Leipzig, it's totally fine to be out and about with these things. Leipzig was like the wild, wild west back then. You could basically get away with anything, but nobody ever hurt anybody. Nobody gave you any hassle. He used to quite often take his knives and his polishing equipment and whatever else along to the pub, sit on his own having a few beers just polishing his knives. He decided to do this in the UK. Sat in the corner of a pub with a pint, just brought out, I don't know, all of these weapons and just started like polishing them away. Of course, of course, instantly the police were called. There was like a SWAT team or whatever the British equivalent of the SWAT team just arrived at the pub and just like jumped on. He went to jail. He, he went to jail. He, he, I think he only did a few months, but he still went to jail. And this guy was not somebody who should go to jail. And then he had three or four years with one of these um, ankle bracelets and couldn't go more than 50 feet from his house. It's a completely ir irrelevant story. But um, yeah, anyway, check your local knife laws, please. And come to think of it, since my father still lives in Scotland, this is out. I don't want to have him to spend his, his golden years in jail. Hmm. Huh. But in much more responsible countries, a fixed blade knife is, is a great gift. I mean, I'm not talking about something military looking, I'm not talking about something that Rambo would carry about, but something that's beautiful, something that's crafted, something you can, you can teach your grandchildren to whittle with or, or to cut cheese in a picnic when everyone else forgot a knife. It happened last weekend. Actually, in fact, Pops, this is what we'll do. I'll get you one of these and I'll keep it here. And you can do all the cheese eating and whittling with, with Carly when you're over. She loves cheese. And I'm sure that Yelka will be just fine with, with you handing a one-year-old a sharp object. Hmm. Um, right, before we go uh, any further into dubious parenting practices, the fifth and final Father's Day gift idea, a journal, a good one. My father writes and writes, writes very, very well. Um, okay, what I mean by that is that his command of the written word is incredible. The chicken scratch scrawl he puts down on paper, you need a an NSA code breaker for that. But uh, but anyway, once you decode it, there is no getting away from the fact that his writing is amazing. However, he has a somewhat, uh, he's got the same opinion as me when it comes to it's easy to find things to write on. So he writes on the cheapest, nastiest ring bound paper or pads or, or even worse printer paper, which instantly gets mixed up and all out of order. I think preserving the writing of folks is, is quite essential. Even it's just uh, the humdrum daily life. It doesn't have to be, be meditations. But the act of putting something down on paper, especially nowadays, is something special. And if you're going to do it, if you're going to do something special, you may as well do it in something special, something nice. In this case, a nice notebook. In my experience, Moleskin is okay, Muji is also okay, Field Notes are good but a bit small, Midori is great, but my all time favourite is Leuchter. The books, the binding, the paper, in my opinion, is just a step above a rest. Step above a rest, step, step above the rest. Okay, those are my five picks for the next five years. I'm sorry to spoil the surprise pops, but I think the surprise is that you're getting anything at all and that I remembered. But guys, what would you choose? What would you have chosen? What would you add? What would you take away? I, I need some more inspiration for, for the, the next five years after this five years, I hope. Okay, that got dark. Anyway, just let me know in the comments below. And to my pops. Dad, I owe a great deal of who I am and what I have to you. Thank you so much for everything. You were and you are the best father, the, the best dad that anyone could hope for. And I use that example with Carly each and every day.
Uh, <clears throat> getting emotional here. Right. Um, and to everyone else out there. Guys, as always, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. Hope you're taking care of each other. Hope you're taking care of yourselves. Hope you're taking care of your dads. And I'm going to see you in the next video.